solutions of a system of linear equations in the previous video we saw the example based on the gauss jacobi method today we will solve an example based on the gauss seidel method which is one of the iterative method firstly let's just understand the working rule suppose we have this equations a one one x plus a one two y plus a one three z is equal to b one. A two one x plus a two two y plus a two three z is equal to b two. A three one x plus a three two y plus a three three z is equal to b three. The first condition that we have to check is same as the Gauss Jacobi method. Here we can see this diagonal elements, which is a one one, a two two, and a three three. For the first row, a one one must be greater than a one two and a one three. Then for the second row, a two two must be greater than a two one and a two three. And for the third row, a three three must be greater than a three one and a three two, which is the leading diagonal elements of the coefficient matrix are large in magnitude in their respective rows. Once this condition is satisfied, we can start. With the Gauss Seidel method, in which we'll write the equations in the form of x, y, and z. If we write the first equation, it will be x is equal to one upon a one one into b one minus a one two y minus a one three z. Then y will be equal to b two minus a two one x minus a two three z whole divided by A two two, and z will be equal to b three minus a three one x minus a three two y, whole divided by a three three. Then after our next step will be to start with our first iteration, in which we'll take an assumption that x y and z are equal to x not y not and z not. We'll take the values of x not, y not, and z not as zero, and then we'll find the values of x one. Once we have got the value of x one, our next substitution will be that we take x equal to x one and z equal to z not, and then we'll find y one. So here is where. Both the methods, which is the Gauss-Jacobi method and Gauss-Seidel method, differ. In Gauss-Jacobi method, we took it as x, y, and z as x not, y not, and z not, and we took the values equal to zero. With that assumption, we found the values of x one, y one, and z one. But here, we'll take X not, y not, and z not as zero, and we'll find x one. Then after, we'll take the value of x one and z equal to z not, and we'll find y one. And then we'll take the values of x equal to x one, y equal to y one, and we'll find the value of z one. This will be much more clear to you while we'll solve the example, and we'll continue this process until we get. Two successive approximations nearly equal. The question is: Solve the following system of equations by Gauss-Seidel method. Two x plus y plus six z is equal to nine. Eight x plus three y plus two z is equal to thirteen. X plus five y plus z is equal to seven. Here in this question, if you will observe, then for all the three equations, the diagonal elements are not. Largest in the respective rows, like for the first row, two is not greater than one plus six. Then for the second row, three is not greater than two plus eight, and for the third row, one is not greater than one plus five. So we'll just rearrange these equations. We'll take the second equation as the first one. Now our first equation will be eight x plus three y plus two z is equal to thirteen.
then the third equation will make it the second equation which will be x plus 5y plus z is equal to 7 and 2x plus y plus 6z is equal to 9. This will be our third equation. Now if you will see then the diagonal elements are largest in the respective rows. 8 is greater than 3 plus 2, 5 is greater than 1 plus 1 and 6 is greater than 1 plus 2. Once this condition is satisfied, we can rewrite the equations in the form of x, y and z. The first equation will be 8x is equal to 13 minus 3y minus 2z. Then x will be equal to 13 minus 3y minus 2z divided by 8 y will be equal to 7 minus x minus z into 1 by 5 and z will be equal to 9 minus 2x minus y into 1 by 6. Now we'll start with our first assumption which will be our iteration 1. Here we'll assume x0, y0 and z0 as 0. This will be our initial approximation. Assuming x0 equal to 0, y0 equal to 0, and z0 equal to 0. Once we have taken this assumption, we'll put the values in the first equation which is x is equal to 13 minus 3y minus 2z into 1 by 8 and we'll find the value of x1 so x1 will be 1 by 8 into 13 minus 3 into 0 minus 2 into 0 which will be equal to 1.625 now we will note the value of x0 equal to 0 Instead of x0 equal to 0, we'll substitute the value of x as x1 and z will be equal to z0. From this, we'll find the value of y1 which will be equal to 1 by 5 into 7 minus z minus x. So it will be 1 by 5 into 7 minus 1.625 minus 0 because here x is x1 and z is z0. Then after our next substitution will be, we'll place x equal to x1 and y equal to y1 and using this we'll find our z1. z1 will be equal to 1 by 6 into 9 minus 2x minus y. Here 2 into x1, 1.625 minus y1 which is 1.075 which will be equal to 0.7792 Now it might be clear to you where the Gauss-Jacobi method and Gauss-Seidel method differs. Now we can go for our iteration 2. Here also we'll proceed in the same way. Firstly, we'll put y is equal to y1 and z is equal to z1 and we'll find the value of x2. x2 will be equal to 1 by 8 into 13 minus 3 y1 minus 2 z1. We have to place the values in these three equations which we have found for x, y and z. x2 will be equal to 1 by 8 into 13 minus 3 y1 which is 1.075 minus 2 z1 which is 2 into 0.7792 we'll get our x2 equal to 1.0271 then same way now we'll substitute x equal to x2 and z equal to z1 and from that we'll find the value of 
y2 y2 will be equal to 1 by 5 into 7 minus x2 minus z1 which is equal to 1 by 5 into 7 minus x2 is 1.0271 and z1 is 0 0.7792 Then we'll use the values of x equal to x2 and y equal to y2 and we'll find z2 which is putting x equal to x2 and y equal to y2 in the equation of z. So z2 will be equal to 1 by 6 into 9 minus 2x2 minus y2 x2 is 1.0271 and y2 is 1.0387 z2 will be equal to 0.9845 if you'll observe the values of x1 x2 y1 y2 z1 z2 they're not at all nearly equal so we'll have to go for our next iteration Again the same process which is we'll put the values of y as y2 and z as z2 and we'll find x3. x3 will be equal to 1 by 8 into 13 minus 3y2 minus 2z2. Now y2 is 1.0387 and z2 is 0.9845. x3 will be equal to. 0.9894 Now using x equal to x3 and z equal to z2 we will find the value of y3 So it will be 1 by 5 into 7 minus x3 minus z2 here x3 is 0.9894 and z2 is 0.9845. So y2 will be equal to 1.0052. Then we'll place x equal to x3 and y equal to y3 and we'll find z3. So z3 will be equal to 1 by 6 into 9 minus 2x3 minus y3. So it will be x3 is 0 0.9894 and y3 is 1.0052. z3 will be equal to 1.0027. Again if we observe the values x2 x3 y2 y3 and z2 z3 we don't get nearly equal approximations so we'll have to go for our fourth iteration the same thing that will put y equal to y3 and z equal to z3 and we'll find x4 x4 will be equal to 1 by 8 into 13 minus 3 y3 minus 2 z3 y3 is 1.0052 and z3 is 1.0027 on solving this we get x4 equal to 0.9974 now if you will observe x3 and x4 it's near to 1 Then after x equal to x4 and z equal to z3, we'll find y4. y4 will be equal to 1 by 5 into 7 minus x4 minus z3. x4 is 0.9974 and z3 is 1.0027. On solving, we get y4 equal to 1.
again if you will observe y3 we got it as 1.0052 y4 we have got it as 1 then we'll find z4 by placing x equal to x4 and y equal to y4 z4 will be equal to 1 by 6 into 9 minus 2x4 minus y4 x4 is 0.9974 and y4 is 1 so we get z4 equal to 1.0009 and if you observe z3 and z4 both the values are 1 so we have got our nearly equal approximations because here x3 and x4 is nearly equal to 1 then y3 and y4 are also equal to 1 and z3 and z4 are also equal to 1 we can write it as since the third and fourth iterations are nearly equal the approximate solution of the system of equations is x is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 1 so this way in the gauss seidel method we start with the first approximation as x0 y0 and z0 once we have got the value of x1 we'll put x equal to x1 and z equal to z0 we'll find the value of y1 then we'll put the value of x equal to x1 and y equal to y1 and we'll find the value of z1 and the same process will continue for the other iterations and we'll continue this process until we get two successive approximations nearly equal you'll find the snapshot of this example on my website the link is in description thank you